faces that I know. Moose at the back there coming. Got Jade in there. You know, I've got Arch Enemy. He's not here yet. I pray that he comes. His name is Mr. Carl. You know what I mean? When he comes, he's gonna, I'm going to drop the mic and pray for him. Amen. So uh, we're going to have a good time today. Amen. Um, I want to preach some this uh, morning. And the sermon that I want to preach is called Church is More Than Just Church. I would say that with me this morning. Say church is more than just church. One more time. Church is more than just church. That's the sermon I want to preach to you out of the book of Psalm 84. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm 84. My main text is actually from verse 10. But for the sake of context, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 10. My main text is verse 10. Psalm 84, verse 10. Church is more than just church. Amen. Now before we take time to read our text of scripture, I want to say a few things. And what I want to say is this, ladies and gentlemen. See, the church has always played a major role in society. During World War I, what they'll do is this. Many churches were used as a hospital. Do you know that because of the church, you and I today have something that we call schools. Amen. When um, Bramford Tower Fire happened in West London a couple of years ago, it was the church, it was the nearby church that they used us as a place of refuge for people to go into that church, people that had lost their homes and families. So the church and society has always been more than just a church. Amen. See, the church is more than the building. You know why? Because the church is a place of refuge. The church is a place where God's presence comes down. The church is a place where you and I meet God and we find destiny. The church is a place where broken lives are restored. Amen. The church is a place where marriages are made. Even marriages might, that might, might fail, uh, fail are restored. Amen. The church is a place where disciples are made, where men and women come into the church messed up with no idea of life or whether they're going or whether they're coming. But they come into the church and they become men of God or women of God. The church is a special place. You know why? Because the church is important to God. That's what I'm saying in my message. Church is more than just church. We might be gathered in a place like this. You might look at a building thinking, why are we meeting in a community center? Thinking, you know, why are we meeting in a place where, you know, the toilet is not even a special place, a clean place. But why are we meeting like this? We're not sitting on um, church, church, chairs that are comfortable. Why are we meeting in a place like that? At the time, people can walk into the building and have that type of mentality. You know why? Because people don't understand that church is more than this church. You know why? Many people at times, the reason why they can think church is just a building is because they can have many reasons why. Many people have different mindsets about the church. Some people look at the church and say, you know what, it's nothing more than a service. The church is a cult. Oh, all the church wants is your money, and it's true. There is some church with some dodgy pastors that want your money. But God is their church. Amen. Some people will be like, oh, the church is a place where I can find a woman. I've heard people say, listen, man, hey, there's some nice girls in that church. Or some good-looking men in that church. And there's many, many reasons why people might have that type of mindset. It could be because they've never been to a church. It could be because they had a bad experience in a church where there was violations. Amen. It could be simply because they don't understand the church. Is more than this church. Yes, we're meeting this morning in this place, church. But at times, people have all these different type of mindset, wrong minds about the church, until they come to the church and realize, hold on, church is more than this church. What really is the church? Is it just a building? Or is the church something more? Let's read that text. Psalm 84 verse 1 to 10. To the chief musician, 
on an instrument of God. The song of songs of the sons of Korah. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altar, O Lord of hosts. My King, my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising. It doesn't matter what you go through. You can still have victory if you stay in the house of God. Verse uh, 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. Verse 6. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointing. This is my main verse. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the day in your courts is better than a thousand. King James is a thousand elsewhere. Church is more than this church. So first of all, what is the church? See, the Greek meaning or the Greek word for church is called ecclesia. That means the called out. It means the gathering of Christians or a group of people that believe in Christ who meet every week in a certain place and they praise and they worship God. See, the church is more than a building, more than a pastor, more than a music, more than an offering, more than a sermon. All these things are good, ladies and gentlemen. But you know that the church is you. Whether you're black or you're white, you are the church. The church is the building. It's not the building. The church is the individual. You are the church. Whether you it doesn't matter the background that you come from. The church is more than church because it's the people. People are important to God. It's not about the building. It's about the people. Do you know why people are important to God? Because God died for the souls of people. He sent his only begotten son for people just like you and me. People that are messed up. People that are broken. People that are lost. People that, that don't know whether they're going or coming. People that are going insane. People that have no hope. People that have no joy. People that are messed up. Broken homes. People who the world might say they're not important. But yet God sees them are important. You know why? Because the church is by the people. That's what the church is. See in our text, the background of the verse, verse 10. Is this? This psalm was re written by um, the sons of, of Korah. Amen. So the sons of Korah re written this, this psalm, and um, they were writing this because they, at one time they were in the temple, which is the church. They were in the temple. They were assistants in the temple. And for some reason, uh, they've been now exiled away from the temple. Now they're no more in the church. Amen. And so. Uh, because they, they don't, nobody, the Bible doesn't tell us why, but for some reason they've been removed from assisting in the church, separated from the house of God. And so they were now far away. And because now they were far away from the house of God, they had a longing to go back to the house of God. Do you know how it is when you go to a place that you love and you're not there no more? You're like, my dad, I wish I can go back to Spain. I wish I can go back to Ghana. I wish I can go back to that resort that I went on holiday. Now that England is cold, I wish I can go back there. And you know how it is when you have a passion and a love for a place, you want to go back. So these people are now far away from once at a place that they love being. And then they begin to write about it, this, this place, which is the church. Because they knew how important it was for them. 
They knew that being in that place, in the temple, was a blessing. Amen. The courts of the Lord, they say, in the text. And that's why they wrote this song. See, for the Jew, the temple was a special place. It was a place where a Jewish person, person felt so connected with God when they were in the temple. It was a place that they valued so much. That's why in our verse, what did it say? It said, it said in our verse, in verse 10, this is what it says. It says, for a day in your courts. Just one day in your courts, yeah? It's better than a thousand. Why? Because the day, man, it was a place of value. You know when you value something, you don't take it lightly. You know when you got like, that nice pair of trainers you, you love wearing, or shoes, or suit you like wearing. It's like when well, you don't wear it on, on a certain day, you might wear it one day, but you, you don't wear it maybe three, four times during the month. You're like, man, I don't know, I want my favorite stuff. And these people, they value the house of God so much that you like, no, I want to be there. I want to be in that temple. It's a place that was so important to me. One day, they said, excuse me. One day. And let's talk about one day. It says, for a day your courts is better than a thousand. Think about one day. Do you know that a thousand days is about three years? I mean, sorry, three, yeah, three years. A thousand days is about three years. Just imagine all the things that you can do in three years. Yeah? Three years, somebody, you guys can get a haircut. Amen. Three years, uh, listen, man, you can get a weave that you want or that nails that you want. Three years, you can get stuff done in three years, church. And I'm not dissing no one. Amen. If I had proper hair, I'd get some nice fades. Amen. But some people do, some people don't. Amen. But in three years, you can get engaged. Three years, you can get married. Three years, you can learn how to drive, right? In three years, you can travel around the world if you have the money. Amen. In three years, you can get a mortgage. In three years, you can change your career. But think about so many things that you can do in three years. A thousand days, three years, right? So think about what you can do in three years. And these people, these sons of Korah say, no, no, give me one day in God's house. I don't care about what I can do in three years. A thousand, a thousand days. No, no, no. Just give me one day in God's house. Why did they say that? Because do you know that? Listen. You can be in God's, God's house in one day. And so many things can happen. Do you know that in one day? Here I was one day. I didn't know God. I was busy smoking weed somewhere. I was busy breaking into people's houses. I was busy trying to check women out there. I was busy raving, doing all kind of madness. Popping ecstasy pills and taking cocaine. And I, didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. And then one day I came to the house of God. One day. Years I've been wasting my life on doing foolishness. And then one day somebody told me about the gospel and I came to the house of God in one day. And so he said in the text, huh, in one day, do you know that in one day when you come to God's house, you can get healed? Do you know that in one day you, your, marriage is, your marriage might be messed up? But you might feel like, I'm going to divorce this woman. I've had enough with this woman. And then you come to God's house, one day you hear a word saying, oh, I'm going to love you again. Do you know that in one day uh, you can be delivered from bondages that have been holding you for years. Jesus can touch your life in one day in his house, church. Come on, church, say amen. See, if people understood what church was all about, they wouldn't use church for anything for anyone. Because church is more than this church. It's more than the building, man. But at times, you know, the devil blinds people's eyes like, child, man, it's just church. No, it's not. Church is more than just church. That's why they said in the text, the sons of Korah, this is what they said. They said, they said look at the text, verse 10. Said this. I would rather be a doorkeeper. Listen, a doorkeeper is not a major job. I don't know some of you guys, you're applying for a job and you're like, you know, I want to be a doorkeeper. I can't say I want to be a bouncer. Look at the size of me. I want to be a doorkeeper. I can't do that. Some people can, amen? But you know when you're applying for a job, you want to aspire for something great, something good. Something that brings in a lot of moolah, a lot, a lot of money for you and your family. But a doorkeeper. Now, if I went down down uh, one of these uh, security firms and I said, I want to be a doorkeeper. They'll look at me up and down and say, are you serious, bruv? I can't do that. But 
they make it a point in the text that it's not their major role. But they said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than be anywhere else. A doorkeeper in the temple in Bible time was a low position. But they said this because of the attitude that they had. That I would rather have some type of service in God's house. Even if I stand at the door, I want to be in God's house. You know why? Because it will do something to me. So what they had was the right attitude and the right mentality. Then they said the reason why I would rather be a day in God's house and I would rather be a doorkeeper in God's house because I don't want to dwell in the tent of wickedness. That's what the text said. It said this in the text. Look at it. It says, done dwell in the tent of wickedness. The dwell means to settle down, to be at home. See, the sons of Korah in our text here, sir, they said this for a reason. Remember, the Bible says that they are the sons of Korah. Yeah? Do you know that their father was Korah? Korah was part of the clan in, the book, um, in Exodus when Moses, uh, you know what, God has given Moses a promise to lead and then Korah was the group, part of the group that rebelled against Moses. And this was their father. So they knew the judgment. Obviously, they knew the judgment that had come to, the, to their dad. And they didn't want to be like that anymore because their dad, dad at one time was serving God. And all of a sudden, because of his pride and because of his rebellious attitude, he decided to dwell in the tent of wickedness. And so they didn't want to dwell in the tent of wickedness. That's what they made a statement. No, no, no. I would have been God's house and dwell in the tent of wickedness. Because they knew what they done, what happened to their dad when the dad dwelt in the tent of wickedness. Do you know that being in church keeps you away from all kind of madness? Listen, you can never have any idea what God has kept you away from because you stayed in the house. He's kept you away from the nightclubs. The boogie down. You know how it is. I can't dance. He's kept you away from the strip clubs. Kept you away from the house of sin, the church. Kept you away from going to jail. I know the house of God kept me away from going to jail. Kept you away from losing your dignity. Precious dignity. Kept you away from the trap and the messes of sin. All kind of troubles uh, that the house of God has kept you. The church is more than this church. The safe place. I remember back in the day we had a church um, service. Uh, the Rovire Church in a place called uh, All Saints. Uh, down in New Cross. Uh, and so what happened was there was this kid that used to go to a church and then uh, for some reason, uh, you know, he leaves church. At times, you know what, people leave the house of God not because they're evil, but because of times of the temptation and the assault of the enemy and the evil words of other people. And so he left the house of God and he used to, um, excuse me, play football with us. And he left. And then one day we were having um, church service. All of a sudden there was a lot of uh, commotion outside. What's going on? Not knowing that this young boy, Clovis, had run into the church. And so we're like, what? what? You know, he ran into the church. And as he ran into the church, he had, he had fear on his face. And he's like, <sighs> and we're like, we're asking, what's going on? Not knowing that the guy that was chasing him, he might just grab him up. And these guys came. They weren't, they weren't joking. They came outside the church. But they stopped outside the church. And what happened was this, sir? Because he has tried to chat up one of his sisters and he abused the sisters. He was after him. There was about ten of them. They had knives on them. This guy left church. Left the house of God. I don't want to know God no more. Went about his business. And now he's in trouble. Where did he run to? To the church. And so these guys, actually they could have come into the church to stab him up. But they didn't for some reason. They stood outside. And then you know what? We actually... Put him in the church, we found a little back door, smuggled him in the church, and then we hid him. We waited for the guys to go out, and then he was able to escape free. This guy actually is still not living for God. But I realized, I saw that story, and I realized here was a young man who realized my days. I need safety. I need help. Where can I go? The house of God. And his life was saved, delivered, kept away from danger, all because of the king. I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, church is more than just church. People need to get it. More than just church. Church is a special place. You know why? Because when we meet together like this, who comes down and sits in the middle? Who 
comes down and opens up the heaven? Who comes down and visit us? Not your grandmother, not your auntie, not myself, even though I'm preaching. It's God Almighty that comes in the house. It's God. What did the Bible say? God's where two or three are gathered. I am there in the midst. Just because you don't see God, it doesn't mean that he's not here. God is here right now, church. And you understand the reason why it's a special place, huh? because God all by himself, the Almighty, El Shaddai, Elohim, the I am that I am, the great, the king of kings, he comes down when we have church. That's why church is a special place. The church is the body of Christ. The Bible talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. It says this. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but you can read it when you have time. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. The body, the body of Christ. That means that even though we're made up of different people, it's the body. That's why at times when I know a brother or sister that I've never felt, I feel it. Because it's part of my body. You know how it is, man, if you hurt your pinky toe. You feel it. The other day, man, when I was in Ghana, I went to Ghana because my dad died. I was in the shower bath and then I hit my pinky toe. Bang! Right now, I'm still feeling it. Because it's part of my body. And so what it is that when people leave, we feel it. Because there's, there's a brotherhood, or sisterhood. There's, a, there's a, a connection that's so deep. That's what we feel. It. Oh, man, I wish you were here. Oh, we feel it. It's part of the body, it's not just one. Different sections are, that mix the body. Think about the human race. There's some that are short. There's some that are tall, like me. Amen. There's some that are Asian. There's some that are black, white. There's some that are mixed race. There's some that have good hair and bad hair. Amen. But you know that it's still part of the human family. Different people, different races. But it's still part of the human family. And so you understand that the reason why church is more than this church is the body of Christ. Do you know that anybody could come to church and find a better place? Anybody. What do I mean by that? In our text. Sorry, I have to keep on doing this. Amen. I'm thirsty. In our text, it says this. Look at the text. Psalm 84 verse 3. It says, even the sparrow. So these people are writing this, but they're paying the attention. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even the autumn. You know what a sparrow is? A sparrow is a little brown bird. Bird. No bird. I don't know. Some of you guys that when you wake up in the morning, you might see them. You put a tree outside the house, you see them. I see them in the morning. You know, but you know, Sometimes you might even walk past them, you don't even notice it. Just a little bird. And so they paint this picture. You know one thing is sometimes, I think of some churches, even right now, I don't know, maybe I think there's a pigeon at the top right now. Pouring something. I've heard it in some of the churches that we've been and we're having church in there. But it's just a picture, it's trying to paint a picture that a bird, even a bird, can find a home. And I thought about it, just, if a bird can find a home somewhere, maybe sitting at the top of the building, not let's. No, it's not necessarily that a bird is at the altar praying, but it's painting a picture. If a bird can find a home, yeah, find a place in the house of God, how much more is you? A bird is not worth more than you. I'm not saying a, a bird comes to worship. Ah, I'm worshiping. No. But I'm trying to paint, it's trying to paint a picture that a bird can find a home in the house of God. How much more a person? Anybody, if a bird can find a home in the house of God. Anybody can find a home in a house of God. That means the prostitute can find a place in the church. Come on, church. You miss a good place to say amen. That means the drunkard can find a place in the church. That means the rejected can find a place in the church. That means the backslider can find a place in the church. That means the criminal can find a place in the church. The fearful can find a place. The fatherless can find a place in the church. The addicted to drugs and cocaine can find the sinner. This functional can find a place in the church. People mentally not sound can find a place in the church. Emotionally messed up can find a place in the church.
people that are stressed out by life can find a place. It doesn't matter who you are. You can find a place. The church is more than this church. The Bible talks about you. The sinner that you are, this could be your home. Maybe you have no home, and you're living in sin. Oh, the Bible says, "In whom we have redemption." Oh, redemption. Oh, we don't get redeemed just out there. We keep, we get redeemed in the house of God through Christ Jesus. Oh, we get redeemed when preaching has been preached. The gospel has been preached, and it touches our heart. Where is the gospel preacher? Outside of four doors, but it's preached in the house of God. And you're in this place today. You don't ride with God. You're a sinner. You're far away from God. I'm telling you, you can make this place your home. There's a space for you. There's a place for you. You know why? Because Jesus shed his blood for you. To forgive you of your sins. Oh, the Bible says that through his blood we have redemption. He became a sacrifice. He died for the church. So that you can be forgiven. And maybe you're in this place today. You don't know Jesus. Today, you haven't come to the wrong place. You've come to the right place. Because it's not the world that saves you. It's coming to the house of God. And hearing the gospel about what Jesus Christ done on the cross. And how much he loved you. That's what saves you. No church is a place of a blessing. Look at, the, look at the text. Psalm 84, verse 4. I love this. This is what it says. Says this. Blessed are those who grow in your house. That's what the Bible says. It's a blessing to be in God's house and grow in God's house. Look at that. Then it says, still they'll be praising you. Then it says uh, they will go, go from strength to strength. Each one that appears before God in Zion. The Bible says to you that we are blessed when we stay in God's house. We might be weak, that's fine. The church is a hospital. But as we stay in the house of God, function in the house of God, lay our life down in the house of God, we're going to find strength. That's what the Bible says. So you're going to go from strength to strength. How many know that's a blessing? Then it says, Blessed are those, happy are those. That dwell in your house. As long as you stay in God's house, no matter what the, what's going on in the world, no matter the dark days or the seasons, no matter the trials or the temptation, no matter the pain or affliction, no matter the assaults of the enemy, as long as you stay in the boat, you're going to be okay. What happened when Noah stayed in the boat? The water came, the floods came. He was trying to call people to come into the boat. No, no, we're not interested. That boat is a picture of the church. And I'm here to tell you, as long as you stay in the boat, you're not going to drown. Because outside the boat are sharks and snakes. Outside the boat are all kind of madness that want to suck the very life out of, or out of you. That want to destroy your hope and your confidence and your expectation. But as long as you stay in the boat, the house of God, listen, it doesn't matter the seasons. Listen, it's not about what happens to you. It's about what happens after what happens to you. What do I mean by that? That means that some people think about the now. They think about the present, what's going on. You don't know your future. God knows your future. And if God holds you, your future, then you have a hope. Come on, church. Don't give up on the house. Don't give up on the body. Don't give up on the church. Don't give up on a place of hope. Don't give up on a place where you can find joy. Stay in the boat. Stay in the house. It's not about how you feel. Do you think that I feel like serving God sometimes? No, I don't. Do you think I feel like coming to church sometimes? No, I don't. But then I might, I might be feeling all kind of madness, going through all kind of things. But then when I get into the house of God, I'm like David. I said, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Because when I get into the house of God, all the demonic things that are going on in my life, the ups and downs, the dark days, the days that I mess up. I'm like, you know, I can make it again. God loves me. I can be forgiven. I can pick myself up. You know what? Because I stayed in the boat. 
church is more than just church, ladies and gentlemen. A date. It's a place of blessing. A place of blessing, church. Think about it. We didn't know how to. Some of some of us, we don't even know how to talk to a woman before. The woman that you're married to right now, you never have her involved with the house of God. My wife and I, no, no. We're not going to cross paths, Asian black. No, no. It doesn't happen. Where did I meet my wife? Virtuous woman. Praise of Holy woman. Lovely woman. Beautiful inside and out. Where did I find her? In the house of God. And some of you can testify, and men can testify that. The woman that's sitting next to you, it's because of the house of God. So let's flip the coin. Some men, some of you women, you're blessed with man of God. He could be like, hey, you have a man of God. You know why? You found a man in the house of God. Think of all the blessings that you had. We came into the house of God. Oh, like this broken burden. We came with all kind of baggages. Sir. We walked into the house of God. Uh, we were messed up, crying. Some of us, uh, we were going to commit suicide. And we walked into the house of God. Uh, and now, it's like as soon as we stepped into the house, our burden was taken off. Uh. Now, we are blessed sitting there. We know how to wear a tie. We know how to wear a suit. We know how to talk. We know how to manage money. We know how to hold down a job. We know how to have a sound mind. We know how to be a father where we never had a father. We know how to be a mother where we never had a mother. We know how to be a sister where we never had a sister. We had friendships, relationships. We had opportunity. Where did we find that? In the house of God. It's not church is more than just church. It's just a blessing. Think about all the blessings in your house. Your life right now. Where did you get it from? You got it when you came. In the house of God. The church is more than just church. He said, he said, we will still be praising you. That means that no matter where you go, you can have victory. My nature is I like attacking jokes. So, no. Me and Carla are always busting jokes, man. <laughs> But I'm going to allow it, baby. <laughs> I might leave. You know, that's my nature. You might see me smiling and laughing. I've had some dark days. <laughs> this year, my son nearly died. Then I had to go to Ghana. Father didn't grow up there. He's dead. My son died in... My son is dead. My, people, my son nearly died in February. His dad died in February. I've had things that people have said to me. Evil words. Hey. Even in church, I came to church. Rejection. Because you know why the house is not perfect. I've had dark moments. But yet, because I stay and I love God, I said we have victory. Victory is not about just a feeling, it's an attitude. You can claim your victory. Own victory. Stand on victory. Not because of who you are, you're standing in Jesus. He said they were still praising him. No matter what happened to him, he was still behind a praise God in his house. Trials, disappointments, setbacks. Who doesn't have it? Everybody does. Everyone has it. Has come up to you. Everyone has their story of that faith. But you just stop and think how could help you if you stayed in the house. Church is a bride of Christ. That means it's a marriage of Christ. It's a marriage of Christ. It's a marriage of Christ. Gave it to the church. So I want to ask a question because I'm closing. And the question I want to ask is this. How do you see church? How do you see church? Oh, help me, Jesus. I want you guys to say this now. <laughs> How do you see church? If church is going to be more than just church for you, you need to have the right attitude. See, the wrong attitude is to be like, oh, you know what? It's just praise and worship. Oh, I love the Lord. The wrong attitude is just prayer. I don't need to. Prayer gives you dominion. Prayer gives you power. If you pray, God will do it. It just announces. Well, announces to be like we're praying for somebody else. 
that person can be your family. Oh, it's just an offering. I don't need to give. Just an offering. It's just a sermon. It doesn't really matter if I miss it. But you know what? It's that sermon that most people believe that it will save you. See, people miss church for all kinds of silly reasons. I've got a cold. I understand that you miss church at times because, you know, hey, I can't make it. Work, work. I understand that. But you know that you can come to church by yeah, you can be physically present but spiritually unaware. Church shouldn't be a place where you come up to catch up your sleep. It should be a place where you come to hear from God and dreaming about the chicken that you've left in the oven. Don't be absent-minded when you're in the house of God. Because you know what? There's a spiritual transaction that's taking place. There's an angels that are in the house of God. The spirit of God is moving. The word of God is moving. You're talking about spiritual dimensions you don't see. So if you to be able to have known that church more than you, then you need to have the right, right attitude about church. I read a quote by D.O. Moody. He said this, church attendance is as vital to, to a disciple as transfusion of the rich, healthy blood to a sick. Church attendance is as vital to a disciple as transfusion of the rich, healthy blood to a sick man. That's why church is a hospital. So the right attitude, the wrong sorry, the, sorry, the wrong attitude is to have an attitude about this, this type of attitude that I just said, amen. The church, the sermon, all that stuff. The right attitude is this. Is that I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be in the house of God. I'm gonna to come to service no matter what. Because I don't know what God might do in that day in my life. The right attitude is to have a passion and longing and a desire for the house of God. Don't let the world stop you from coming through these doors. Don't let circumstances stop you from coming through these doors. Don't let your friends stop you from even family members coming through these doors. Because that's what the devil likes to do. Hinder people and block people from going to the place to promise. The Bible says in Psalm 84, verse 6 and 7. Look at the text. This is what they're saying. It says they pass through the valley of the They only join us. Yeah? They make it a spring. The rain also covers the food. And I love verse 7. They go from strength to strength, each one. So they're moving. No matter what it takes, I'm going to go through that valley. I'm going to make that journey. I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting to Zion. That needs to be the right attitude for you. I'm not going to allow anything to stop me. Make yourself available for that. The Bible says that he said, I'd rather be a daughter. Listen, everybody's got something to do in the house of God. You've got something to offer. What I have is different from what you have. But God made everyone with talent and ability. So when you come to God's house, say, God, I'm going to do something in your house. I'm going to use something that you give me to bless you. I'm going to be available. I might be able to cook. I might be able to, you know, just do design something. I might be able to do sound. I might be able to just greet people. I might be able to just come and have a smile on my face. Everybody has something to offer in the house of God. Appreciation. So you need, we need, you need to appreciate all that Jesus has done through your life in the church. There's so many things that you've got to appreciate God. Time will at times you, you need to stop and give God praise. Remember you were praying for something, you never had it, and now you've got it. He gave it to you, it was God. God, stop at times and God, I praise you. Even if you just come to church and you say, you know what, I might not be able to sing properly, I sing like a crow. Uh -uh. I might not be able to do the praise words, but God, I can at least open my mouth and say, thank you. There's so many things that you can praise God for. So many things you could appreciate God for. If God, has, if God hasn't done anything at all, He's done something for you. Appreciation. I appreciate your house. For all the blessings that you've given and reverence. This is the house of God. This is the holy place. And God is here. It's important to have reverence and respect for the house of God. Because the house of God is a place of holy preaching to come through, anointed preaching, instruction comes through, exhortation. We need to honor the man of God and his wife and his family. But not just honor the man, but we've got to honor the house of God. 
You know what? God is here. God is watching over this today. God is in the midst, moving. That's why some people are getting convicted and getting touched. Because God is speaking. God has revenue. It was the house of God. Don't underestimate the word of God has been preached. The word of God is spiritual. I reverence in the house. And I close with this. You ought to love the church and value it. You know why? Because Jesus gave his blood for you. He gave his blood for this church. These people. All these people are sick. Remember, church is not building. Church is more than just church. It's not the building, the people. Jesus gave his blood for you and I. He gave his blood for the church. I can't value it. This church is more than this church. I close with a statement. It says this. God wants every local church to be the first place people think to go when they really, really messed up. Not the last. That's a, a, a quote that I read this morning. This is where you need to come when you messed up. This is where you need to be when you messed up. Even when you, know, you haven't got it all together. Just, just. All you got to wear, maybe you just have, wear, have a mini skirt. That's you. You come and maybe, maybe your mouth is stinking full of alcohol. No, no, just come. That's what the Bible said. Come as you are. All you that are heavy leading. And I will give you rest. This is a place for you, no matter where you are now. The church, the Lord, the church, the church, church, the Lord, 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 and they have come. And they have come. Let's give God praise, church. Amen. Come on, church. Give God praise in this place. Father, we thank you. Oh, God, we give you praise. We're going to pray this morning. Maybe you walked in this place. I've said a lot. Maybe you walked in this place and you're not right with God. Maybe you're not Christian. The Bible said, "Except the man become, sorry, you shall not see the kingdom of heaven." In this place, as a visitor, somebody gave you a flyer, and then you came to the church. You walked back. God brought you to this place for you. And you're in this place where you're not right with God. You're not too sure if you to die today. You make it in your home. See, I have a promise for you. The Bible says, "All have sinned and are fallen short of the glory of God." All. There's many people living life without Christ because of sin. All are falling short of the glory of God. The glory of God is part of the glory of God for you to, to be forgiven. For God to be your heavenly father. For you to make heaven your home. It's because sin always has a consequence. Sir. There's many sins that people commit. Lies, cheating, sex outside their mouth, cold fornication, drunkenness, all kinds of sins. Many, many types of sins. And your sin might not be another person's sin, but it's still sin. But it could be, you know, there's a consequence of sin. The Bible says this, the way you sin is death, but a gift of God is born life. That means that a man or woman lived their whole life living in sin. Sin is basically, you know what, living a life without God. Living sin all their life. When you die, you're going to lose your soul as your eternity in hell. Because when we die, it's either going to be you going to, going to heaven or going to hell. The Bible says the wages of sin, the wages of something you get from your mouth and your work. And the Bible says that when a man or woman has lived their whole life in sin, far away from God and godliness, the Bible says that when you die, what you're going to get at the end of your day is eternal health and hell. But I love the other side because God doesn't just leave one side of the page. There's another side of the page. It says that by the gift of God is eternal life. So you give someone a gift because you love them. And what is the gift of God? The gift of God is that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, came down this earth cross for sinners. He died for your sin and died for my sin. That's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have a world after life. How did Jesus die? He died on a bloody cross. 
cross, crucified. He came down. He shed his blood. He was beaten, stripped, naked. And then they buried him. And on the third day, the Bible says he rose again. And because he did that, the Bible says that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And you're here today. You don't know God. You don't like with God. You're not a Christian. I'm talking about doing the sign of the cross or having the Bible underneath the pillow. But maybe you come from a Christian home. But you yourself, you have to turn your heart to God. But I want to tell you, God brought you to the church, this church today, for a reason. And today I want to make a call out to you, young or old, black or white, back to the front. You know you're not right with God. You know you're not a Christian. You know you're not too sure. Maybe you're not too sure if you're back in it, you make it in your home. Maybe you realize that if you're the preacher, my day, this is God's house and God has brought me here for a reason. And I want to make a call out to you. Today, you can find forgiveness. Today, you're supposed to be cleansed, washed. Today can be a new chapter of your life. But that's not for you. That's what the Bible says. If any man will confess it, confess what? God, I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. I repent of my sin. Come into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. He says, if any man will confess it, confess it in his mouth and then believe in his heart, he shall be saved. What's saved? Forgiven. What's saved? Wash the way you sin. What's saved? Saved. You become a Christian. What's saved? Make God, God your heavenly father. What's saved? You become a child of God. What's saved? You make him in the home. And today you're saying, Pastor, I am that person. I am that person. I am that young person. That old person. Black or white. I am that person. I need Jesus. I want to pray. I want to, I want to, I want to give my heart to Christ. And through the preaching, I realize today that God is with me for a reason. You are the person. They say, I want to pray. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. And you want to pray. If that's you, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I'm not going to hold this much longer. You're here. You're saying, I want to pray. I need, I need, I need a prayer. I want to pray. I want to give my life to Christ. Lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. I really want to really pray for you. If you want to pray, you want to give your heart to Christ. If it always starts it's, it's, it's a with a prayer. I want to pray for you. Lift up your hand. I want to pray for you. Maybe you're here today. You're back singing. You're back singing. Far away from God. One time you walked with God. But now you're back singing. See, God loves you so much. And the saying that I have, I say to myself, as long as I'm alive, there's hope for me. And you can rededicate your life back to God today. You say, I'm back singing. I need to rededicate my heart. If that's you, lift up your hand and you pray for me. You know, God really stirred my heart to preach this message. I know that God is ministered to people. But we're gonna we're gonna pray right now. Then you know maybe you've lost the sense, the reverence of the house of God. Maybe once you value my oh, day, God is here. And now it's like, oh, it's just church you do Wednesday, Sunday. Maybe you, you, you begin to have wrong attitude by church or something like that. You know, when you miss the house of God services, it doesn't really bother you anymore. I don't know where you where you're acting, but I know God has spoke to you. Maybe it's a place where you're like my days, you feel like I can't do nothing. No, no. Maybe that's that's what you're feeling. Maybe it's a place where you're a place where my days is dark days. You're thinking my day, I've been in the church so long. I make sure everything's going to work out smoothly. But in reality, is that just because you're a Christian, it doesn't mean everything will work out smooth, smoothly. The whole thing is that there's always light at the end of the tunnel for Jesus. But I know God has spoken to people today. We're going to take time to pray. I know these floors are hard, man. You know what I mean? But the altars are open. Those that want to come forth, don't even turn around your seats. Amen. But I want to pray for people. So let's pray. To come on, church. The Spirit of God is here today. Amen. Let's pray. Wherever you go, pray. Maybe you're losing your love for the house of God. You don't want to be here no more. You're here, but you don't want to be here. Maybe you need to pray, God, give me a love again. Give me a renewal. Church, let's pray, church. Come on, church. Let's pray. Find a place. Turn around in your seats if you have to. Let's pray to God. God is so good to us, church. Oh, my day. This place is so special. Oh, the house of God is so, so much of value. Oh, man. Naramasha. Naraman. Mama. Naraman. Bibi. Bebe. 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 Mama, 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 rima, durubon, durubo, shandalaman. Mama, man, diri alaman, durubo, shinduri alaman, durubo. Yen, alaman, mama, man, durubon, durubo, shandalaman, durubo, durubo. 
Have your way, Spirit of the Living God. E kalabande ribe. Oh, ndurururu ba 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 ma ma ndurugu. I pray God for the Blumry Church. Oh God, e nalamandurugu. Ayan nalala nalamandurugu rubu shandaraba. Cover this church, oh God. E nalaman by your blood. Purify this church, Lord. E nalala nalabari banduru. Those that are weary, God, strengthen them, oh God. Oh, nalaban dele 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 Father, I pray, God, those that have been assaulted in their mind, uh, demonic assaults uh, against every individual who's in this place, uh, I take them in and I bind uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, my God, I pray, God, let men and women in this place uh, have an appreciation once again for your house, oh God. Oh, nalaban dele 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 nalaban dele Lady, I want to pray for you. Can you come up? I want to pray for you. You about there? Lady, yeah, you? Yeah, you. Can you just stand up? Yeah. I want to say something to you. What I want to say to you is this. You know what? I heard, I, I see, this is the first time you've come here, right? Yeah, because someone told me. I was just telling you, like, right now as I'm praying, you know what? I want to say to you that God is the potter and you're the clay. God is the potter and you're clay. Where you're clay. Well, what do I mean by that? You see, what happens is this, yeah? When a potter's got clay in his hand, right? He's making something. As he's making it, there's a lot of stones and stuff. Because clay, when you pick up clay from the floor and he's making that clay, he has a vision of what he wants it to be. You know, he wants it maybe to be a mug, maybe to be a bowl or something like that. Or something to be used, something nice. Or maybe some, a, a ceramic, something like that. Something nice. But anyway, but as he's making it, there'll be stones in it. And as the stones in it, he take it out, throw out the stone. And then when he pulls out the stone, he's on the pedal and he's doing it like that. So as he's taking the stone out, there'll be a hole in that stone, and he'll catch it up. And he's still making it, spending hours in it. And then when he turns it around with his hand, he's molding it, and there'll be another stone. So what he's doing is that he takes different bits out of it. And as he's taking the bits out of it, then there's a, a hole in it by the end of the I want to say something to you. All your broken pieces, God's going to fix it. Yeah? I don't know where you come from, you know? But you've been for a lot of But all your broken pieces are going to And so this sermon I'm preaching is also for you, actually. You, know, you haven't come to this place by accident. You came to this place for a reason. Because you've taken, you've taken your broken pieces to a lot of places. Maybe a bit down the pub, maybe a drink, and everything's going to be right. But then you come back down to square one. Or maybe you've taken it to the drugs. As I said, wherever it is, are you taking places? You're crying out, I know you can hear the answer, you know the truth. All you want to know is, you come to this place, stay here. Stay here. You might understand a lot about preaching or whatever people know, oh, but it's in, hey, these people are the first, just stay here. Because it's a hospital that God has built in a spiritual hospital. And all the broken pieces is in a fix. The rabbi, I know you're, like you're, you're on the wheel. And God is a potter. And, you're the and he's, he's doing something. In his mind, he already knows where he wants to be, where he has to be. But you're grappling with dealing with what's in front of you. You're dealing with what's in front of you. All the absence, all the bad words, all the evil things that you know, all the things, all the letdowns, like, you're no good. You know what I mean? You understand? All the, this, is, this is where you're at. But God is the potter. So he's the clay. So you're the clay. He's the potter. And as he's making you, you already see where he wants you to be. He knows about the pain of that. And he only thinks this, you know what? When church opens, I'm going to come. Because you, you found a place of refuge in you. You found a place of safety. You found a place. You don't have to carry that burden for you. You found a place. You know what it is? When the world gets busy, you don't want to get busy. Sometimes you need to find a place where you go find a place of peace. Or you go for a walk in the park. Or but no, no. This is your place of peace. Don't do it. Stay calm. Come in your trainers. Come in your hat. Because you you you're in a hospital. See, in a hospital, when somebody stays in a hospital, when they're injured, 
the state is going to be repaired. Just come. Just stay. And this is the place that they stay. All faith in the Father in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God. I, I, I thank you, oh God, for her life. I pray that let it be done according to your will. In Jesus' name, I touch you. Help her, oh God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You can find a seat, you know. Sorry to embarrass you, you know. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Nurubushanda Ramanduru Bushan. Oh Nurubu Mumu Mumunduru Bushanda. Oh Nuru Bushanda. Oh Nuru Bushanda Rabani Munduru Bushan. Oh Nuru Bonda Rabani Munduru Bushan. In Alamari Munduru Bushanda. Oh Nuru Bushanda Rabanda Rabani. Oh, mama, mama, mama. Luis, I want to say something to you. Luis at the back there. That, that good looking fellow at the back with a beard. Amen. <laughs> well, I want to say, you've, you've been, you're, I don't know if you've been praying, God, hear my cry, hear my cry, hear my cry. You've been praying, it's like your heart's crying. God, hear my cry, man, hear my cry. Hear my cry. God, you know, things that happen. God, please hear my cry. All I want to say to you, God, God's going to hear your cry. He's going to hear your cry. But you see, just be consistent about the crying out you're crying out to him. Because God's going to hear, because that's your heart. He's hear my cry, hear my cry. And you see this, he's going to hear my cry. And he'll say, God is going to hear your cry. And don't think he's not hearing your cry. And he's hearing your cry. Just be consistent in my praying and asking him for help. Asking him for strength. Asking him for direction. And let that be, let that continue to be a and listen, God is hearing your prayer. You know, those that set their faith to seek God, He hears them. Now, at times you could be, you could be discouraged and say, "You're crying, you're crying, you're crying. nothing's happening." Are you crying? And then you could be like, "I can't cry no more about it." Listen, the same thing that we can't cry no more about what we're crying about. You know, I don't need to go. But when it comes to you crying out to God, you can always cry out to God. It's not something you stop. But that's your heart, God. Hear my cry. And God is hearing your cry. I just need that place of consistency. Bring him to him. Bring him to him. Bring him to him. Bring him to him. He knows. And he, he's the one that will lead you and guide you and help you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for his life. I pray for your grace and for your hand. Oh God, give him strength. Give him strength, O oh God, to continue, O oh God, to petition, to lay hold of you, to trust in you, O oh God. All the needs and all the cares and all the worries, God, I pray, Father. Help him, O oh God. O oh God, rejuvenate his strength and his desire for you, O oh God, God. O oh your God, I hear thou cry. God, we cry out to you. As our brother cries out to you, God, may you hear his cry for your good God. And help him, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know what, church? You know what? Love your church. Love the child of God. The place of blessing. That's what I have to do. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. That's big J didn't come to take over. God bless you guys. Amen. Um, I know if one or two people could just speak to Sister Mo. She's going to need some organization with the tables and chairs. 
I just want to help in the route. Unless you choice, have a great time. Hallelujah.